Holograms and Whiskers, A Diplomatic Incident By Elton Gar Luna stretched luxuriously on the polished marble floor, her sharp claws briefly scratching the surface before she rolled over onto her back. Her ears twitched at the hum of voices and the rhythmic clatter of hurried footsteps echoing through the high-security government building. The humans were busy again, she noted with mild disdain, always rushing about with their strange devices and urgent voices. Her owner, a kind scientist who fed her scraps from the lab, was among them, his focus entirely absorbed in a sea of glowing screens and buzzing gadgets. Luna yawned before getting to her feet and padding silently, following them toward the more interesting part of the building. As she approached the restricted area, Luna's path was blocked by the guard, a tall man with a stern face and a no-nonsense demeanor. He was speaking into a small device clipped to his ear, his eyes scanning the corridor. Luna crouched low, her tail twitching as she assessed the situation. She knew the guard well, he had shooed her away many times, but today she was determined to slip past him. The guard glanced down, noticing her. He muttered something as he bent down to scoop her up. Luna backed up, her fur bristling as she hissed at him, her green eyes locked onto his. The guard lunged, but Luna was quicker. She darted to the left, narrowly avoiding his grasp. Her heart raced with the thrill of the chase, her body a blur of motion. The guard's hand closed on empty air, and he cursed under his breath, his face reddening with frustration. He tried again, this time moving to block her escape route, but Luna was already a step ahead. She sprinted toward his legs, zigzagging to throw him off. The guard stumbled, trying to keep up with her swift, unpredictable movements. Luna's body vibrated with excitement as she slipped between the guard's legs. He twisted around, nearly losing his balance, and made a final desperate grab for her, missing completely as she slipped by. Inside the conference room, the atmosphere was markedly different. The air was charged with a mix of nervous anticipation and something else she couldn't quite place, a scent that was both new and intriguing. Humans in crisp uniforms moved briskly, their faces serious, as they adjusted various pieces of equipment and arranged themselves around a large conference table, dominated by holographic screens and strange contraptions. Luna's whiskers twitched with curiosity. Ignoring the occasional glance from the busy humans, Luna navigated the room with ease. She weaved between legs and under chairs, her eyes wide and ears perked, absorbing every detail. Her owner was there, speaking in hushed tones with the leader, a person who exuded authority and wore a uniform that commanded attention. The leader's voice was sharp and precise, giving orders that were followed without question. In one corner of the room, a device emitted a low hum, projecting complex holograms into the air. Luna approached it cautiously, her eyes narrowing as she studied the floating images. She batted at one with a playful paw, the hologram flickering in response. Unimpressed, she continued her exploration, the guard's attempts to catch her fading into the background. As she roamed, Luna couldn't help but notice the heightened tension among the humans. Their voices were urgent, movements quick, and the air was thick with an unfamiliar blend of scents. She smelled the usual notes of coffee and paper, but beneath that was something new, something not quite human. Curiosity peaked, Luna hopped onto a chair, then onto the table, her soft paws barely making a sound. From this vantage point, she could see the entire room. The humans were too engrossed in their preparations to notice the small intruder among them. She watched with unblinking eyes as they finalized their setup, her attention briefly captured by the flickering of a holographic screen displaying an otherworldly scene. Luna's ears twitched at the sound of a door opening, and she turned her head to see a group of individuals entering. They moved differently, their steps lighter and more fluid, and their appearance was unlike any human she had ever seen. Her whiskers vibrated as she caught their scent, alien yet strangely compelling. The humans greeted the newcomers, their voices a mix of formality and underlying nervousness. Luna watched, her green eyes reflecting the shimmering holograms as she observed the proceedings. The humans and aliens took their seats around the large conference table, the atmosphere thick with tension. The holographic projector in the center of the table hummed softly, casting a shimmering three-dimensional image into the air. It displayed a complex array of data and visuals, essential to avoid miscommunication between the two species. 
Luna watched the flickering images with mild interest, her ears twitching at the unfamiliar sounds. The humans shuffled nervously, their eyes darting between the aliens and the holographic displays. They adjusted their chairs, cleared their throats, and fiddled with their devices. Luna's owner was among them, his face tight with concentration as he monitored the projector's output, ensuring everything ran smoothly. The leader stood at the head of the table, his posture rigid, eyes scanning the room with a mix of authority and apprehension. A flicker from the holographic projector drew Luna's attention. The images distorted momentarily, causing the humans to exchange worried glances. A technician hurriedly made adjustments, his fingers flying over the controls. Luna noted how every glitch made the humans' faces tighten with anxiety. The aliens murmured in their melodic language, the tones sharp and dissonant, compared to their usual fluid speech. The unease that permeated the room made her ears perk up. The rising tension was evident in every face she observed. The leader attempted to maintain a facade of calm, his hands gesturing toward the holograms as he spoke in a measured tone. The humans nodded in agreement, their eyes fixed on the aliens, searching for any sign of understanding. The aliens, however, seemed to grow more agitated with each passing moment. Their fluid movements became more jerky, their melodic tones edged with frustration. Despite the humans' efforts to maintain control, frustrations were mounting. The leader's calm demeanor began to crack, his gestures becoming more animated, his eyes flashing with urgency. The holographic images continued to flicker intermittently, each disruption adding to the palpable tension in the room. The aliens exchanged glances, clearly conveying dissatisfaction to the humans. They murmured among themselves, their melodic voices creating an almost hypnotic harmony. The unease that permeated the room made her ears perk up. The rising tension was evident in every face she observed. Luna's attention drifted around the room, taking in the strained faces and agitated movements. The humans seemed to be trying to convey something important their eyes pleading and their hands gesturing toward the holograms. The aliens responded, but their tones carried an edge even Luna could sense. Luna's attention drifted back to the holographic projector. It emitted a low, steady hum, punctuated by occasional flickers. Luna's whiskers twitched as she watched the shifting lights and colors, her curiosity piqued by the movement. She rose from her comfortable perch and padded silently across the table toward the intriguing device. The humans were too engaged in their own tense exchanges to notice Luna approach the projector. Her owner's eyes were fixed on the data, his face tight with concentration. The leader's gestures were increasingly animated, his attempts to regain control of the meeting becoming more desperate. Luna paused next to the projector, her green eyes narrowing as she studied it. The humans had set up various gadgets and devices around the table, but this one had captured her interest. The flickering holograms created patterns that danced enticingly, and she couldn't resist the allure of the moving lights. With a gentle paw, she batted at the edge of the projector. It rocked slightly, the holographic images momentarily distorting. One of the technicians noticed the movement and frowned, but before he could react, Luna's paw struck again, this time with more force. The projector wobbled precariously. The humans around the table froze their eyes widening in unison as they registered the impending disaster. Luna's owner half rose from his seat, his hand outstretched in a futile attempt to stop her. The leader's mouth opened in silent protest, his eyes locked on the small, determined cat. Luna, oblivious to the growing horror in the room, continued her exploration of the projector. She nudged it again, her movements deliberate and unhurried. The device teetered dangerously on the edge of the table, its base no longer stable. The flickering holograms distorted wildly, casting chaotic shadows across the room. The aliens shifted in their seats, their fluid movements becoming more erratic. They exchanged glances, their melodic voices rising in a chorus of alarm. The humans mirrored their distress, their voices now an urgent cacophony as they pleaded for calm. But all eyes were on Luna. With a final, decisive push, Luna sent the projector over the edge. Time seemed to slow as the device tumbled through the air. The humans watched in helpless horror, their outstretched hands too slow to intervene.
The projector hit the floor with a resounding crash, its components scattering in a burst of sparks and broken glass. For a heartbeat, the room was silent. The humans and aliens alike stared at the wreckage, their faces a mix of shock and disbelief. The holographic images flickered one last time before vanishing, plunging the room into a stark, unsettling quiet. Luna, satisfied with her handiwork, sat back on her haunches, her tail flicking idly. The humans scrambled to assess the damage, their voices rising in frantic urgency. Her owner dropped to his knees beside the broken projector, his hands trembling as he attempted to piece it back together. The leader's face was a mask of barely contained fury, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. He cast a withering glance at Luna before turning to the technicians, his voice tight with command. The technicians moved swiftly, their fingers flying over their devices as they tried to salvage the situation. Then one of the aliens shorter than many of them and wearing less ornate clothing made a quick sharp noise. It was the same laughing noise humans made when they thought something was funny. Then a second later, another of the aliens joined in, laughing harder than the first. As the tension seemed to drain from the room, some of the humans began to laugh. The leader sat down, looking around at everything, then began to laugh harder than any of them. Luna wasn't sure what they thought was funny, so she began to groom herself, licking her paw with deliberate methodical strokes. The human technicians continued to try to put the device back together for several more minutes, before one of the aliens bent down next to them. It put long thin fingers on the back of the human's hand and said a few melodic words. Then the human stood and walked away. With the laughing done, they moved back to the table, but the rigid formality had been broken, and with it, the scent of fear and anger began to be replaced by a more natural interaction. Her owner, stress etched across his face, moved closer to the leader, whose stern expression softened. The leader gestured toward the scattered pieces of the projector, and then toward Luna. There was a moment of mutual understanding between the humans and aliens. Sensing the change, Luna flicked her tail contentedly and settled into a more comfortable position, her green eyes half-closed as she watched the proceedings with mild interest. The humans and aliens began speaking in simpler terms, using gestures and expressions to convey their messages. Without the interference of the holographic projector, they seemed to connect on a more personal level. Luna's whiskers twitched as she watched her owner make broad sweeping gestures, his face lighting up with enthusiasm. The leader, who had been so stern before, now appeared more approachable. His posture relaxed as everyone focused on understanding one another, rather than sticking to a rigid protocol. Luna observed the humans and aliens, mimicking each other's gestures and expressions. The humans began to put aside their devices, leaning in and using body language and simple sketches to make their points. The aliens, initially hesitant, started to respond in kind. Their melodic voices softened, and their movements became less reserved. One alien, with a series of fluid gestures and a melodic sequence of sounds, illustrated a concept that caught the human's interest. Her owner nodded enthusiastically, mimicking the alien's gestures to show his understanding. Gradually, the atmosphere shifted from strained to collaborative. Humans and aliens were now animated, their interactions punctuated by laughter and nods of agreement. The room buzzed with a new energy, a blend of discovery and mutual respect. Luna's owner glanced at her, a smile softening his features as he reached down to scratch her between the ears. Luna didn't really care about her role in the historic event. She eventually found a cozy spot on the table and curled up for a nap, her soft purring adding a gentle background to the ongoing dialogue. Hours later, as the last participants left the conference room, Luna's owner carried her out into the hallway. The building resumed its usual rhythm, but the atmosphere was lighter, a sense of accomplishment palpable. Luna, now back on the floor, stretched luxuriously and set off on another exploration, her curiosity undiminished. Author's Note I've written a few stories about first contact. Many of them are more complicated than this story, but I don't think any were more fun to write. And while this had to be a fairly simple story so that it could be told from the point of view of the cat, there is more to it than it seems. I believe one of the best ways to judge someone is to see how they treat someone or something 
that they have power over. Whether that is an employee, a child, or in this case, a cat. And seeing the humans treat Luna well after she does real damage to the meeting, improves the alien's view of them. And while I didn't include it in the story, I think that the alien who broke the tension by laughing has his own pet. Of course, there is also the cat of it all. I'm more of a dog person myself, but I like cats, and one of the things I like most about them is that they tend to be a bit more mischievous than a dog. In most cases, when my dog does something wrong, she punishes herself more than I punish her. But the cats I have known often do things, like pushing something important off a table, just because they are curious, or perhaps because they want to see your reaction. And I tend to have a similar chaotic sense of humor. I am also aware that there are a lot of people who know more about cats than I do. For them, I just hope I got enough of the details right that it felt like a cat, even if, for the sake of the story, I had to let her understand a bit more about the situation than I think most cats would. If you did enjoy it, you can sign up for my newsletter and get free prose versions of my stories every week at www.ansci-fi.com. Or, if you want to help me make more stories, you can visit patreon.com slash elton. There, you can vote on the monthly theme for my stories, this month is non-human point of views, and read stories as a free member or as a paid member vote on what specific stories I should write and get access to over 40 patron-exclusive stories at any paid membership level. Thank you. Elton Gar